welcome to another beautiful poem of Flamingo, A Thing of Beauty by John Keats. Let's know a little about the author before we move on. John Keats was a British Romantic poet. Although trained to be a surgeon, Keats decided to devote himself wholly to poetry. Keats' secret, his power to sway and delight the readers, lies primarily in his gift for perceiving the world and living his moods and aspirations in terms of language. Don't you see this? He was trained to be a surgeon, but he was so passionate about his poetry that he decided to be a poet. So what is his poet going to tell us? What is his poetry going to tell us? First, uh, we shall go through the entire poem and then obviously we will go line by line and I shall explain the entire thing to you. <clears throat> a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness, but will keep a bower quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. Therefore, on every morrow are we wreathing a flowery band to bind us to the earth. Spite of despondence of the inhuman dearth, of noble natures of the gloomy days, of all the unhealthy and o'er darkened ways, made for our searching, yes, in spite of all, some shape of beauty moves away the pal from our dark spirits. Such the moon, the sun, trees old and young, sprouting a shady boon. For simple sheep and such are daffodils, with the green world they live in, and clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make. Against the hot season, the mid-forest break. Rich with a sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms, and such too is the grandeur of the dooms. We have imagined for the mighty dead all lovely tales that we have heard or read. An endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from the heaven's brink. Now, this has been so beautifully woven, so beautifully. I mean, while we were reading, of course, there were some words which were a little difficult to get it. But yes, just as we understand out of it, it is talking about the beauty, the beauty in the world. So let's go further to understand it still in depth. Now, what is the theme? What is the poet actually talking about in the entire poem? So, A Thing of Beauty is an excerpt from John Keats' poem, Endymion. It's a poetic romance, which is based on a Greek legend. It is all about the Greek mythology. Being a romantic poet, John Keats talks about love, beauty and youth in this poem. In fact, the poem reflects his attitude towards beauty. This poem is all about beauty, just as the title tells you a thing of beauty. Likewise, it's all based on it. The poet believes that beauty is intransient and gives us the same pleasure again and again. It never fades. The beauty never fades. It's always there and it has a lasting impact. It provides us with eternal joy and never fades away. Beauty plays a very important role in our lives and helps us to remain happy and joyful in this sad, mundane world. We are all surrounded with all kinds of situations, all kinds of circumstances. At times we are really happy, but at times we are really sad, we are depressed. So this is what he's trying to tell you, that beauty plays that role at that point of time when you're really sad and you want to come out of depression, you want to come out of sadness and look at the brighter side, yes, it helps. So what is it in a nutshell? A Thing of Beauty is a poem taken from the poem titled Endymion, a poetic romance.
written by the famous poet John Keats. The poet says that a beautiful thing is a source of endless joy. It never comes to an end. It has eternal beauty which never fades away. A beautiful thing is like a shady shelter which gives us a sleep full of sweet dreams, good health and relaxation. So here he is comparing beauty to a lot of things. Here he is telling you how beautiful are the things around us. Do we even notice them? Yeah. Do we even appreciate the fact that we are blessed with endless beauty around us? Well, let's go further and find out. So here is the first stanza of your poem. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness, but will keep a bower quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. Now, if you look at the meaning out here, it's very uh, clearly given to you. Bower is a shelter under the shade of trees. So when you are, you know, relaxing under the shade of trees, you have that, that place actually is called a bower. Now, what are they trying to tell you here? is the poet says that the beauty stays forever. It never fades away. Now he says it doesn't go into nothingness. It's always there. There is always something to it. It never goes blank. Rather it increases with the passing time. The perception of the poet regarding beauty is that it never goes off with the passing time. Rather it beautifies more and more. Now, have we all even noticed flowers around us? Have we noticed the leaves around us? Have you no noticed the edges of the leaves that have been shaped so beautifully? Have you noticed the shaded leaves having perfect colors? Ha has anyone thought that how do those things come from? Where does that beauty come? Who sits to, you know, apply uh, that with a paintbrush? Is that the case? Does someone really paint them? No, that's the existing beauty we are blessed with. God has put it in such a beautiful way. Have we ever realized that we need one tube light to switch, you know, to brighten your room, but the sun has so much of light, it brightens the entire world. Have we noticed the moon? Have we noticed the moon descending and ascending? Have we noticed the crescent moon and the full moon? There are so many beautiful things around us. Have we noticed? Have we stopped to realize that, oh wow, something that we couldn't have thought of. Let me even come to a very simple example. We have all eaten corn, right? Who is the one who puts those corns one by one in a row and then covers it with that light hay and then the cover? Have we ever thought of it? Give it a thought. Everything that you pick up, everything that you see around in nature, how? How has it been made? How has the juice come in those? Uh, you eat oranges, right? You see the flakes, how they are arranged. Who does that? How does it happen? It's beauty. You find beauty in everything that exists. Nature at its best. For the poet, beauty is like a beautiful shady tree under whose shade all the creatures can sleep peacefully and enjoy good health. So coming out of you know that tension, were, uh, tension, you have monotonous life going on, you wake up, you're running for work, you're again studying probably your, your students, you all are studying, rushing to school, rushing to college and then again back with your projects, your assignments and then again the little mobile that we have which plays a big role. So yes, totally lost and absorbed in that. Do we stop at all this and look at the beauty we are blessed with? Well, it's time to do it. Keep taking those short breaks. Now, when we talk of a poem, right, we have to make sure that we know the literary devices attached. We have to make sure that we know the figures of speech or the poetic devices used. Now, if you look at this, we have these literary devices, first and foremost, the rhyme scheme. Now it's A, A, B, B and C. Now if you look at this, how do I say it's A, A? Forever, never. That's A. Keep, sleep, 
B and then it is C. This has nothing, there is no rhyming ending to it. So it is A, A, B, B, C. That's your rhyme scheme. Please remember when it comes to a poem, you have to know these are the basic things that have to be there. That's the foundation of a poem. Now, when we talk of alliteration, the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of closely connected words. Now, it is sir, sir, the sound. Don't go to the spelling. Uh, more it is, you, you have to concentrate on the sound of the first letter. Then you have the metaphor, the bower we already, uh, you know, are comparing the quietness. The calmness of the bower is compared to the calming effect of a beautiful thing. It is, compa it is compared, it is shown the similarity, but we are not using words like like or as. If words like like or as would have been used, it would have been a simile. Therefore, on every morrow, are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the earth. Morrow, the following day or the next day. You have the meanings just in front of you. So it's easy for you to get it. Reading is to move in circles or spirals. So like as we are reading every line of the poem and we have the meanings with us, try getting the poem out, right? So till I get to the summary of this stanza, you should have some picture in your mind and then I should further clarify it for you. So, uh, therefore, on every morrow, on every next day, are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the earth? We are reading, that means we are moving in circles, we are moving in spirals. Spite of despondence of the human dearth, of noble natures of the gloomy days, of all the unhealthy and o'er-darkened ways, made for our searching, Yes, in spite of all, some shape of beauty moves away the pal from our dark spirits. Dark spirits, your sadness, your depression, where your spirit is going absolutely low. So he says that every day it is the beauty which fills us with the spirit to live. It is the beauty that keeps us going. You are traveling by train, you are traveling by plane, even when you are traveling by road, maybe by car. Look on the sides, right? Just look across the window and you'll find the best seen sceneries. Have you ever realized the sunrise or the sunset? Though we are living in cities, it is not necessary that we have to go to hill stations. Of course, hill station has its own beauty. It is total paradise undoubtedly but even when we are living in our cities just walk across to your balcony early in the morning or probably during the sunset be it the dawn be it the dusk just look across look at the sky just stop for two minutes and just look at the sky right now right now as you're watching me just take a peep at the sky i'm sure you'll find it beautiful the problem is we've never thought of doing it we are so absorbed in other things, we are so absorbed in our monotonous life, in our mundane life, that we don't even realize that, wow, beauty is really beautiful. Yeah? So, it fills us with the spirit to live. It is the beauty which builds the desire in us to live, though there are sad moments and cruel people around us. It, the sad moments come how? Either you are expecting something, things don't happen, so you're depressed, you're feeling low, someone said something, all the negative things we are all aware of that we've been going on day in and day out. That, that's a part of our life, right? But do we have to take it to our heart? No. Let's forget that. Let's just overlook all the negativity and look at the beauty. It will give us the spirit to live. It will not get you depressed. It will keep you on the move. So, it gets you away from all the cruel people as well. So, here the poet wants to say that without beauty, the earth will be full of cruel people, sad and gloomy moments. If you don't overlook this, if you don't put your, you know, shift your focus to the beauty around you, the problem is you will be in trouble. You will land up in a mess. So, it's better just stay away from all this. Just overlook, just let it be. Just forgive and forget and keep moving on. Stay on the go. 
It is the beauty which is created by God which helps us to remove the sadness from our hearts. I already mentioned that to you, right? We should be looking around at each and everything. How does a tree stay uprooted? How does it stay there? You have the roots spreading down under the ground. You have the tree. You have the... How does a seed grow? Do we even realize that there is such a big plant in such a small seed? Have we ever thought of all this? No, we haven't. Because again, we are all lost in our busy lives. So yes, coming to the literary devices of your second para, it's anaphora, use of the same word in two consecutive lines. Now here you see the two consecutive lines you have, it's, it's totally there, of noble natures, of all the unhealthy, in spite of all, so of all and of all, right? You have the repetition of the words in the same, in the consecutive lines, just immediately one after the other, so don't get confused. Alliteration again, we said the sound, so it is B, it's band, bind, it's N in the noble nature and S in some sheep. So again, it comes, you have the same letters as well as the sounds, letter or sound. Metaphor, reading a flowery band. Now the beautiful things of our life bind us to the earth. Now that's, it's comparing the flowery band, it's, it's being compared to the beautiful things. Flowery, obviously it is, uh, it's definitely beautiful and life. So it's going round and round. So it is a flowery band, right? So that's where metaphor comes into the scene. Imagery is creating a sensory effect of beautiful things lined up in a string, a flowery band to bind us. Imagery is basically, you know, it's coming from your sensory organs, right? It's, it's coming from your senses. So it gets connected to that. So based on that, it's called the sensory effect. Inversion, it is a normal order of words is reversed. Are we reading a flowery band? Now here generally we are reading, it should be coming, but here they are putting in the reverse order and that's the reason it is called an inversion. We are inverting them, we are swapping them. So these are your figures of speech or your literary devices for your second para. Moving further to the third. Such the sun, the moon, trees old and young, sprouting a shady boon. For simple sheep and such are daffodils, with the green world they live in and clear rills, that for themselves a cooling covert make, gains the hot season, the mid forest break. Beautiful. It's so beautiful. It is telling you all those beautiful things which are around you. What are they? The sun, the moon. Trees old and young, you look at the trees, whether they are nice and bloomed or you have the ones which are yet coming up, yes, they are sprouting a shady boon. They are giving you that shade, they are giving you that nice peaceful bower, they are giving, it's a boon. They are a blessing, they are indeed a blessing. For simple sheep and such are daffodils. Look at the sheep, look at the daffodils. Have you seen the daffodils swaying? They are literally dancing, they're moving left to right. They are so beautiful. With the green world they live in. That's the beauty, that's the nature, that's the greenery around us which we fail to admire, which we fail to notice and clear rills. Rills are what? It's a small stream, right? These are the streams that for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot season, the mid forest break. It is used, uh, break of, of course, we, you know, when we are using it to slow down something or stop something. So this is what the poet is trying to tell you. He's describing the beautiful things which are present on the earth. We already discussed. These are the sun, the moon, the trees, the flowers. They can be all flowers. You can even consider all types of flowers just named here and the rivers. Poet says that all these things are like a blessing bestowed on all the creatures by earth. Yes, it is for all of us. He further describes that the trees provide us with their shade, flowers with their beauty and rivers with their coolness during the hot summers. 
you have them all each one of them is playing their own role and giving us wonderful things to remember all of these are the beauties of nature which are like a boon a blessing for all of us alliteration here you have sprouting shady simple sheep the sea in the cooling covert you have all of them uh, the like we said the letter or the sound antithesis now here you have two opposite ideas put in a sentence to achieve a contrasting effect old and young a very clear example you have a contrasting effect so you are using two opposite ideas in the same sentence if you remember the line we had discussed trees old and young so this is where antithesis has been used right okay further imagery again uh, talking of your senses trees giving shade sprouting shady boon growing process of daffodils now the daffodils with the green world that they live in that line which is there clean river streams these are the clear rills so here again it is all talking about how you see it your senses you are talking about rich with a sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms and such too is the grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty dead all lovely tales that we have heard or read an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from the heavens brink talking of the words first now such too is the grandeur that means something that is really grand something that is really royal that comes under grandeur if you are talking of the mighty dead mighty dead here enormous in the sense here it is you know they were those real people those real famous people who actually gave up their lives and immortal something which never dies which is always living and bring here is the edge let's connect all this into our summary the poet further carries on with the description of the more beautiful things present on earth now he is shifting now he is moving from the nature he is coming further such as the beautiful musk roses which have such a nice fragrance yes fragrance how does the fragrance does someone spray perfume on the flowers you smell a rose don't you get beautiful fragrance you anything that gives you i mean do you even realize do you have you even given it a thought that where does that fragrance come from who instills it in the flowers how does it come then he describes the tales of the mighty warriors who laid their lives for their countries or for humanity when we said the mighty this is what we meant the tales of the mighty warriors those warriors who gave up their lives so that today we could live in peace we have the entire freedom he says that these beautiful things are the gifts from god for all of us yes it is everything that you see around you everything thank god for it count your blessings for the same because we have been blessed with all the beauty on earth they are like a nectar given by god to us and these are those beauties which are immortal and they give us a reason to live on this earth despite having so many sorrows in our life we all have ups and downs in our life right we always have so much of negativity around us but it is totally in our hands that how we overcome it how we overlook it and keep moving on let's you know just shift our focus from all the problems in our life to the beauty of life let's count our blessings let's thank god for all the beauty that he has gifted us and what will happen is you will somehow forget all your pain you will you'll forget all the misery if at all you are going through any 
uh, hope not of course and we'd rather concentrate on something that is immortal something that will never die something which has a lasting effect even if you go to a hill station you might come across the best scenes on the earth you might see nature at its best but what do we do we cannot be there forever right so what do we do that has a lasting impact whenever we think of it it brings us a smile it brings us pleasure it gives us so much comfort that wow we had been there that place was amazing the sunrise was incomparable we have so many things yes today being the digital world we even capture it in our phones or cameras but yet in spite of having it in them this has an effect it leaves something in your heart and mind that you can recall and enjoy that imp i mean that immortal effect it has something which never dies so if i talk of the alliterations here it is h haven't heard you have the imagery where the bushes full of musk roses uh, where they're talking of sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms books describing the valor of fighters that's the grandeur the mighty dead god providing us with best things pouring from the heavens brink heavens brink here they meant from the edge of heaven now here they're talking about the dead right the mighty dead so obviously we are talking of heaven they are blessing us even from there they have blessed us they gave up their lives and today we are enjoying the freedom so right from the heavens brink it comes rhyme scheme we are all aware forever never keep sleep dead red metaphor the immortal drink what do you mean by here beautiful objects of nature are forever like a never ending portion of a drink this is what is trying to tell you these beautiful objects of nature they are forever the beauty is there it is not going into nothingness it is not fading away it is just there as it was and of course it is something like the never ending portion of a drink this is how uh, the comparison has been made between immortal drinks and so what does it tell you beauty is not in the face beauty is in the heart the faces may change you are young right now with years passing by you will have a different look altogether but the beauty in your heart will always stay young you know they say beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder so it's all basically how you look at it if you are wearing black goggles something will be visible black but if you're wearing something transparent you have a very clear white picture yes so it all depends on how beauty lies in the beholder what you look at from which angle do you look at and how blessed you feel so i'm i'm suppose that uh, this has definitely given you a little task a task for your benefit keep looking around keep thanking your blessings and keep learning and keep watching